Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we've got on the table a towel, this is a towel breacher of the, now <laughs> listen as I managed to completely murder the pronunciation of this, Dianoi, I think is how it's supposed to be said, uh, Dianoi, Dianwa, this particular towel set. Um, I quite like them, I had a look up with some of their uh, history because I don't know the towel too well, so took a little bit of time to read up on them. Apparently these guys are considered kind of backwater and they get described as a little bit more rustic than uh, some of their more cosmopolitan cousins. Now, how you have rustic in the 41st millennium, I'm not 100% sure, but that tends to manifest itself, it seems, in this sort of practical brown armor. So what we've got here is a really simple way to make sure that that's all going to look right when it's on the table. Now, later on in this video, you're going to hear me completely flub explaining how to paint a straight line. <laughs> so I'm going to touch on that very quickly now. The easiest way to do that is to organize the model in your hands so that when you're moving the brush, all you've got to do is just bring it down in a straight line. So rather than sort of trying to paint sideways or what have you, all you're doing is moving your brush straight up and down with simple brush strokes, okay? And you move the model rather than moving the brush. So I just wanted to point that out before we get started because that is kind of important. You can see on these uh, on these sept markings up on his helmet and I do manage to completely ruin it later. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't edit it out. So <laughs> bear with, let's get started. So to start off with, we wanna lay down the color of the armor first. And for that, we're gonna use Steel Legion Drab and we're gonna overbrush that. Now overbrushing is sort of similar to dry brushing, except instead of getting most of the paint off the brush, we're going to leave most of it on. That's, <laughs> that's the main difference. Over the top of that, we're then going to go ahead straight away and dry brush Carrick Stone. Now you might want to use something like uh, Tyrant Skull instead, which has a slightly brighter, slightly more yellow finish to it, but I'm going to use Carrick Stone. Then what we're going to do is tidy up by painting the fatigues, and that's going to be Rakarth Flesh to start with. Then any of the black details on them, we're going to do black. Now I've got Abaddon black here, just in case that's what you've got at home. But I am going to use my Vallejo black. Um, I think I've mentioned a few times, the coverage on it is just a little bit more solid than the Abaddon black. So I'm going to swap in for this one for the purposes of this demonstration. And then anywhere that there's exposed flesh. So if you've got a towel that's got his helmet off, for example, or you want to make sure that you're going to paint around his feet, you know, those exposed sort of toe areas. We're going to base coat those with the fang. Now for overbrushing, I've got my large base brush here because I like a brush with a flat edge for this. Now I'm just going to get my paint straight out of the pot and I'm not going to water this one down, but I am just going to make sure that it's not all in the brush. You know, I don't want to sort of splatter the whole thing. Then what I'm going to do is lightly back and forth the same way I would do if I was dry brushing. Just start painting this on. And you'll see we're going to leave some of those recesses with the base coat intact. But for the most part, we're just laying down that nice mid-tone brown. So what I'm going to do, go around, make sure all of this is covered in Steel Legion Drab. Now that we've got the main color of the armor down, I'm going to go ahead and try that sort of selective dry brush. We're going to highlight our uh, miniature by dry brushing the edges of it. So you want to be quite sparing with Carrick Stone as usual, and as ever, just dry brush the edge of the base to see how much we're going to leave behind. And that ought to be pretty good. So I'm going to aim for areas that I want to sort of highlight, that I want to pretend the light is catching as it gets onto the edge of this armor. And you can see, even on these um, fairly rounded sort of edges of the uh, Tau helmets, you can still get this if you're just a little careful, take your time, just go over a couple of times and build up that color. Now this won't be a perfect straight line in the same way as if you were to edge highlight with a brush, you know, and sort of very carefully do it, but this will save you some time overall. So what I'm gonna do now is go around all of the armor and I'm gonna just edge in everywhere that I want that nice Carrick Stone edge. And you'll see how easy that is just to get that nice sort of faked out highlighting effect. And it hasn't gone too chalky except along some of these really high points. But that's not to worry. We'll get that fixed up in a few minutes. 
Now I've got my Rackarth flesh and I've got here one of the old uh, base coat brushes, but you'll find a small base brush will do the same job fairly easily. Now all it is is going around and just fill in all of these areas where the fatigues are. Now as well with this set, some of these areas are going to be sort of blacked in later, so just have a look at what you want to do and uh, you can ignore any of those areas that you're going to black in. But let's go around now and fill in these fatigues. Now when it comes to the black on the model, some of these areas we're going to want to look sort of mechanical and other we're going to look a little bit more, I guess, leathery. The difference is going to be in how we highlight them. To start off with, they're all just going to be black. So, for example, on this fella's gun here, some of that's normally black. So I'm going to just pick a hard edge on the weapon. And if there's a part that's sort of time consuming, it'll probably be this bit. Because you want to try and avoid getting into any of the areas that you've already painted. Like the armor that you do want to stay that color. So, take your time. For example, this sort of van brace and glove and all that, that's all going to be the black area. And then remember as well, any of these straps along the back of his legs. So get yourself your medium layer brush or a small layer brush when you get to these uh, smaller areas and just go in now and fill in everywhere that you want to be sort of black mechanical and the leather. And quick as that, all of those base coats are done. There's not really a lot going on with these towel fellas, it seems like. It's, it's down to sort of how complex you want them to look. Now, as a quick note, this sort of basic technique will work for almost any of the Sept worlds. So, for example, if I was going to do um, the Farsight Enclave, I'd start with a corn red overbrush, dry brush at Astareth red, dryad bark the, uh, the fatigues, blacken what I wanted black, and then wash in the same way. So I've got here my Agrax Earthshade, and like I said, just, you know, swapping around the colors will let you get quite different results. So if you're looking at um, another set world, consider that. So I've got my medium shade brush, and now I'm just going to go over the whole model and fill in with this lovely deep shade. I want to make sure that I get this into all of the recesses, and you'll see how it sort of flattens out the armor plates a little but leaves those, uh, those dry brush highlights intact. So let's see how that looks when I'm finished with that. Now, just while that wash is drying, we'll go through the highlight colors we're gonna to use to bring that up. Over the fatigues, we're gonna use flayed one flesh. Now you can use, for example, witch flesh, which would be a, a much brighter one, but flayed one flesh has got a nice sort of beigey tone to it, which I think will work really well with the armor. Introduce a little bit of warmth overall to that color scheme. Then for the black, I've got two different colors here. Dawnstone will be what we highlight all of our sort of mechanical stuff with. So the edge of his gun, the edge of sort of armor plates that we did, like his van braces, they'll be edged in Dawnstone. But any of the leathery stuff, so his gloves, for example, we're going to edge in Dark Reaper. It's a slightly more blue tone and it, it, it looks a little more natural, I think. You can just highlight them both, uh, highlight all of the black with Dawnstone, but introducing Dark Reaper, I think, will help sort of split those two areas apart. Now, you might have noticed I did actually skip over the fang. Um, ultimately, there wasn't really enough sort of flesh on this model to really bother <laughs> going ahead and painting that one. But if I was going to put some fang on there, I would highlight that now with rust gray. And then for the metal parts, here's where it starts getting interesting. For some of the black, sort of the roundel areas, like the, um, the parts on the gun, I'm going to do an edge highlight with Iron Breaker. And then any little bits I want to sort of make look a bit more mechanical, I'm going to do some random spots of Iron Breaker over the place. I've also got Stormhost Silver, and I'm going to use this on the lenses on the sort of helmet area, because what I'm going to do after that is put a little wash or some of the uh, gemstone paints over that, and that'll just be a real quick way to make those uh, those lenses sort of pop without having to worry too much about highlighting them three or four different ways. Now with that wash dry, we can see how it's settled in all of the recesses and helped tone down some of the chalkiness of that uh, dry brush for a highlight. It's also given us a bunch of shading on the fatigues, which is really handy because it makes this next step all the easier. What I've got here is my flayed one flesh, and I'm just going to aim, oops, I'm not going to drop the model. <laughs> I'm just going to aim for anywhere that I want a sort of a highlight. 
I want to I want to accentuate the folds in the fabric. So I'm down to my what would you call it? A uh, small layer brush here. And you don't have to be too um, you know too generous with this. You really just want to bring it up anywhere that there's a sort of hard edge to the clothes or anywhere that there's a raised, you know, that you can see there's a, a raised curve. So for example, along well, along his butt here, you've got this nice long streak that goes under. And we can follow that along. Just like that. Okay. So anywhere that you want to sort of accentuate the shape of the clothing, just go ahead now and add a little bit of flayed one flesh. Now we're going to do the same thing on all of the sort of hard edged mechanical looking stuff. So I've got my Dawnstone on my brush and let's do his van braces and the edges of his gun. Now we'll do our Dark Reaper on all of the sort of leather parts. So along his gloves is the obvious one, but also remember those sort of booty socky thingies he's got going. Just doing the back of knuckles, you know, accentuating the shape of these hands. Then our last step for highlighting the black will be these little sort of techno nobbles. <laughs> I don't know what these are called on the towel guns, if I'm honest. So I've got my iron breaker here, and I'm just going to do a little line either side of the sort of split that they've got in that gun thing there, which just makes it look a bit more high tech. After that, I'm just going to go around and anywhere that I want to sort of add a bit of visual interest, uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of iron breaker on some of the techie bits. Now I've got my Stormhost Silver, and the last thing I'm going to do is just these three little bobbles on this helmet here. So just quickly filling those in. Now if I fill in sort of the center of this nodule here, it's not too much of a problem. It's going to help us out with what comes next. Now what I've got for me here is a couple of the uh, technical paints. This is going to be Soulstone Blue and Spirit Stone Red. Now these are the sort of gemstone translucent gooey paints and they, they're quite thick. You don't want to water these down before you put them on. But how these work is just dab. I'm hoping I haven't let it dry on my brush too much. Just dab a little of this on top of the surface you want to look There we go. It's a bit hard with these teeny tiny <laughs> sort of pinprick lights, but let's just dab that on there. Because it's got a slight sort of translucency to it, and the uh, metal shininess underneath will help it look a bit more like a glowing lens. So let's do the same thing here with our Soulstone or Spirits. I forget what they all are, Eldar thingy. Let's use the red one and bloop. Now that has gone a little bit awry. <laughs> up and around the silver edge there, you can see I've gone a bit uh, bit overboard, but we'll tidy that up in a second. Now that I've tidied up that eyepiece with a little bit of Stormhost Silver around the ring with the old uh, detail brush, what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of Calgar Blue and I'm going to organize the model so that in my hand it's sort of... how to explain? Just all I've got to do is bring the brush straight down. So I guess I'm holding it straight when arranged against my brush. What I'm going to do is just paint on a couple of thin lines and then block one of them out a little bit at the top. And we're sort of faking out the, uh, the towel markings there. So it's not the fanciest looking, but once it's on the table and there's a few of those around, <laughs> you're not going to notice any discrepancy on that. So I've tidied up that set marking a little, and there we have it. That's our Dianoi uh, Tau Sept Warrior finished. Uh, the breeches are a real cool cat. I love the dynamism and the sort of the posing you can get from these guys. They're really neat. And the thing is, is the basics for this technique will work across pretty much everything, all the way up to the battle suits. Although you might want to fudge a little on sort of how you get that beige stuff onto some of the uh, the really big war machines. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and chuck his base on him. I might do a little bit of sort of extra metal stuff on the tip here just to make that uh, look a bit more high-tech. Grab a picture of him and you guys can see him how he's finished. 
So as ever, guys, if something in there was useful for you, you know, feel free, let me know. If there's anything you want to see in the next few videos, again, I always check my YouTube comments as well. My Facebook and Twitter are both linked down there too. So as ever, guys, thank you very much for your time. You enjoy the rest of your day.